Hey everyone, it's Friday the 27th of March and it's 7.30 in the evening. What a peculiar week we've had, you know. It feels so strange going into town and seeing everywhere closed. Apart from the few essential stores. QD, which is technically a hardware stroke department store, they're open. Roy's have closed, even though they could stay open. They've chosen to close for whatever reason. Maybe they've got too much staff self-isolating, so they just haven't got the staff to open, I don't know. Um, and both our supermarkets, all three of our supermarkets are open. That is pretty much it. And I actually found this evening that only two of our takeaways are open. Anyway, what I really want to talk about in this video was my model railway. I've got quite an update. I'm uh, pretty happy with it so far. I've uh, balls to join up on this. So I'm going to have to take that section of track up and uh, fix it. Well, it requires bag and tax back in, so I'll do that tomorrow. But uh, this is the layout I've got so far. So, I've now got two loops, as you can see, two loops, the inside one's going to be the passenger line and the outside one's going to be the freight line. Originally I was just going to have the one loop but I got bored with that idea quite quickly. <laughs> oh pardon me, uh, I've got three sidings which I've got curves in, which I didn't really want. I wanted nice straight sidings, but they would have been like, sort of that long up to here, which would have been quite short. So I didn't like that idea of having really short sidings. So <clears throat> I thought if I put the curves in, I've got extra length, so. Yeah, not really what I wanted to do, but it works. So, this fourth siding, I don't actually know what you would call it, will actually have my single locomotive, locomotive shed up the end there. And I've actually marked it out on the table where it's got to go, so I can put it back in the exact spot, because it's uh, just over there above that uh, car. It's going to get a repaint before I stick that in. Ah... Uh, the um, two road locomotive shed's going down there now. It's not where I wanted it in the first place, but it's the only place I could make it work. Because I just couldn't get all of this to fit in that small space. So, didn't have a lot of option. But it works. I've still got to make the uh, two road locomotive shed up, but I ordered a hobby knife, which arrived today. I just need to order some spare blades, I think. So I can actually make a start on it at least, and I've got the glue. That's why I can hear a lorry engine ticking over. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much what I've got. <laughs> um, this inside loop I've taken up and put down at least three times now. Uh, the first time was because of this point here, because like a dipstick, I didn't leave enough room to put a point motor in here. Um, and it wasn't until I was thinking about it that I realised I can't put a point motor underneath either. Because they designed them so they can uh, come up from underneath. And they uh, just hit a, or go through a little hole there as a little pin. But I've got a beam, a wooden support going right across the middle there right where that's it so can't put one underneath either so I had to space the gap got everything sorted I thought great I could get the point motor in there sat the point motor there sent my little guinea pig locomotive around and what did it do it crashed straight into the point motor because didn't I didn't factor in that when locomotives go around this corner the front nose will stick off a bit and hit the point and I thought, I'm not taking this track up anymore. But at least not down at this side. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave this one as a manual point. 
when I want to switch it, I will literally just lean over this corner and flick it with my finger. But the others will be done with a point motor, because I can get a surface one there, 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 and there. Just not there, because again, I haven't got any room in there, and I can't make room, so... I will get an underside point motor to put in there. But for now, I'll just manually flick it. Right. So. I'm actually waiting for some um, electronic boxes that I bought from eBay to arrive so I can get the uh, uh, one of my switch control boxes made up because each one of these sidings is currently dead because I've got a plastic insulator right there on each siding so there's one there and another one there and what I've done I've actually got to readjust this one because of this wire sticking up there causes the locomotive to bounce over it so and derail because I'm a bit of a dickhead um, but I've got two pairs of wires soldered to the track one either side of this joint and they will run off to four switches over there I've got the switches big pile of various switches there so I've got two red wires for this one two white for this one Two green on this one and two yellow on that one and I've got to completely redo that one because I've effed it up. As you can see. Can you see how high this is compared to that? That's not going to work because I've melted the plastic track connector. <laughs> so it's all come apart. I'm glad I've got spare. Plus I've actually decided I want to move that and put it here instead between that join. So it actually turns this whole section on and off rather than that section so I did really put that in the wrong place anyway but I could desolder those wires clean that wall up put a metal connector in there and uh, Bob's your uncle or even just cut those wires off and bin that straight bit track and put another one in <clears throat> it's not like I'm short of track um, and I can actually demonstrate it working oh. yeah. the reason I picked the same two colours for each switch is so I've got a matching pair of wires and I know what that pair of wires will go to so if I ever have a fault it should make fault finding a lot easier that almost fell off again so here's the rest of it, it's like a little loom really isn't it I've got way too much wire here than I need but I did guesstimate it when I cut it off uh, that's going to be removed and I'm actually in two minds whether to, whether to buy another one of these or a big control unit with two controls on it, you know, two outputs. Haven't decided yet. <clears throat> but anyway, as you can see here, I've got two red wires, which are bad. The other ones aren't bad yet. And I've got my controller. If I turn the controller on and I turn my little dial, so if I get an angle where you can see both, nothing happens. If I get these two wires and I touch them together, I can hear him humming. I turn the dial. I can make the train move <laughs> on that siding. But if I do this with the wires, look, the train stops. That's the whole point of switching those sidings, because these sidings, they're powered from the outside loop. Um, which means if I wanted a train sitting on a siding with a locomotive, or even a whole row of locomotives, or sitting, you know, a locomotive sitting in a one of the loco sheds, you know, being repaired or something, if I didn't isolate them with this switch as soon as I'd set locomotive going on here the whole lot would all start moving which I don't want obviously so by doing this I can bring trains into the sidings here I can park one up say on this siding turn that siding off turn the other siding on and take a train off of that one if I want you know to swap them around easy peasy he says <laughs> 
so yeah that's what that whole bundle of wires is for so each of these will just go straight to one switch each of these pairs uh, so it doesn't matter what way around the wires go on the switches this is two wires and I'd take say two of the white ones and I just put one on that one and one on that terminal done and then just bolt this to the lid on a box when I get it I'm just going to have to drill a hole first and whatnot. and uh, yeah Bob's your uncle Fanny's your aunt and I'll do a similar thing when it comes to the point motors except I'm going to need three wires obviously so there's the point motor you'll have your common oh, I can't remember on this one where it's got to go but I have one wire on there one wire on there and there's a common somewhere that I can't remember where it goes it goes on one of these I think so yeah I'll have like a loom of three wires coming off of these and what I did with these as you can see I just used whoops be glad when I get that extra cable clip in there each pair of wire I've just taped together with a bit of tape. I've just gone along the whole length and at you know certain points I've put a bit of tape around it. Then bundled all four pairs together with some cable ties. And I've got two clips up there, but I want another one to put up this end. Just to uh, keep the cables up out of the way. Doesn't really matter what it looks like under that bit because we can't see it even when we look under the table it's just a bit of cable management my stepdad doesn't seem to bother with that um, which is fine but the downside to not bothering with cable management is it makes troubleshooting a bigger pain in the ass because you have to try and remember what wire goes where then have to try and trace what wire goes where at least with this I know that this loom that runs down there that will go to this switch box with the blue switches in even though I can't see the blue ones will operate the four sidings uh, and then I'll know that my next wiring loom which will actually be thicker than this one because it's going to have uh, three, six, nine, fifteen wires in total <laughs> that's a lot of soldering I've got to do uh, I've got some more point motors lurking somewhere, I think they're in a box under here actually. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that actually. <clears throat> but aside from the lighting, which will be the next thing I'd want to do obviously, um, or probably the last thing, because I can't really do the lighting until I've got the roads and the buildings in place so I know what buildings I want lit up and where I want the street lights. The daft thing is, this is how bored I've been this week. I've ordered the street lights already. <laughs> I haven't even got a road on here to put them on. I've already ordered the street lights. I think what it was, I was just looking at the ad on eBay and I just thought, why not? Oop. <laughs> you can actually pick these little toggle switches up quite cheap on eBay. And they're great for projects like this. I think it was like £2 and some more pence for a pack of five I can't remember if I've got enough point switches though how many did I need? one, two no I haven't, I need one more I've only got four Ooh, my stepdad's got one I can pinch he might have a spare one actually and uh, I've got three of these um, switches as well it's got three terminals on so you could use it as like a forward and reverse switch if you really want to, but you can use it as an on-off switch because you you know you'd only use two of the terminals out of the three. You just use the middle one and whichever side you wanted. I took these out of something, but I can't remember what I took them out of now. Something I was taking apart. So I've got three of these as well, which I think would be possibly enough for my lighting. So in total, I really need three project boxes to make three switch panels up. <clears throat> oh, and I've ordered some LEDs as well with the resistors for a 12 volt supply because I want a visual indicator on here for those sidings so I know uh, when a siding is turned on so I don't accidentally leave it on. Um, 
so when the siding is on a little LED will light up but I can't remember I think this is 16 volt this particular power supply and if I decide to use another one of those and I may have to change the resistors you know for one suitable for a 16 volt supply not a 12 volt I think I'm going to double check that power supply but I'm pretty certain it's 16 volt Chuck those wires under there up the way now. Here's the advantage is if two of those wires short together it's not going to do anything. <laughs> it's one of the few times that you can actually say that about wires. It doesn't matter if they short together. Right. Yeah, I think the next step is to get at least these siding isolators wired in and the point motors done then I'll do like the ballasting and start putting in roads and the buildings and things. We really don't need that many buildings because I haven't got that much of an area to put them in. I need to get the uh, platform built. That's another thing I've got to build. Although I was going to cheat, I was thinking, as I'm going old school with this anyway, to actually buy an old plastic Hornby platform and buildings. Because like I said, I'm going old school with this. Why not go all the way old school with it? Um, I'll, just, I'll have to think on that, I think. Always get that one thing that'll never come out of these bloody bags. Get out of there. It's stuck on something. Ah, there we go. No. It's gone down into the wrong corner. Oh, sod it. Deal with it later. <sighs> right. Wouldn't mind putting a little red LED on these buffers as well. I think I'm going to take these buffers off and paint them as well. Because I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> uh, I've forgotten to put some pins in here. Yes. Actually, I can see where I've forgotten to put one in. Oh, and there. Oh, I missed two out on that one. I have to remember to bang those in tomorrow as well. Once I've uh, sorted that joint out over there. Can't run a train over that because that'll hit that lip on that track that's uh, sitting proud. And uh, where's my main light off now? and just derail the train straight away so I'm going to have to sit and sort that out oh. I've got a box in the hallway, should we actually go and uh, open that up and see what's in it? I'll just uh, sit you there for the minute uh, Yes I'll deal with you in a minute You know, the weird thing is, I had two parcels sent from the same person at exactly the same time, only one arrives. You know, where the hell is the other one? But it always happens, I've had it happen before. Right. I'm here, honest. Oh, I'm not going to let go everywhere, I better move my chair. Right. This is traffic cone related. I know what it is. I'm trying to keep the box out of sight because it's got my personal address on it. Don't mind the town that I live in. I don't mind you know putting that out there, but oh yeah, I forgot those were in here as well. And I can't remember if that's a DVD he put in here as well. Maybe you're a game or something, I can't remember, we'll have a look in a minute. Great. So, item number one. It's what they call a cone topper or, or a cone converter. Now, I've got three of these, so I need another traffic cone with the slots in the bottom, which I've got two of. Because the idea is, perhaps I should speak when I'm not rustling the bloody plastic. So we're meant to be self-isolating 
That's now at least the third time that motorbike has gone round town. <clears throat> Here we go. So these sit on top of traffic cones and the uh, red and white barrier boards just slot into these. And you can get traffic cones with slots in the bottom so the cone can be basically converted into a, barrier, a barricade post. And you've got your road lamp mount on the top there and your barricade lamp on the top there. So yeah, I've actually got three of these now. Um, the box that's AWOL at the minute has got um, cone extenders in. <laughs> because the seller, my friend, bought... I don't know if he bought this one, but he was trying to buy one of these from this seller on eBay and they kept sending out the wrong thing. <laughs> he ended up with three of these cone converters. Uh, all right. Uh, a lamp key, but I can't remember what lamp that was for. It actually looks like a Tildorn. Oh no, it's a Dorman. I was going to say, I think it was a Dorman. That part looks like a Tildorn bolt, but it's got the Dorman bolt thing on that one, then your little pin there to turn it on and off. Thank you for that. A little cap of lamps. More mini lights. I do like my mini lights, I've got loads of them. Oh, hello. Oh. Got similar one here, it's got the two pins there but then it's got this one that slides out to turn your lamp on and off so you slide that back in out of the way and what looks like a hexagonal key in there for the main bolt what's this one going to be for? this could be for a Stell maybe either a Stell or a JSP something like that Right, what's the DVD or whatever I've got? I can't remember. I can't remember if it's a DVD or a game. I need a DVD. Oh yeah! Model Railways DVD. Ooh. I'm looking forward to putting it on, so... Thank you for all of this. I do believe you still watch my video so you know who you are. I'm not going to give your name out on video though. On the count of, I haven't got your permission to use your real name so. But you know who you are. So thank you very much. Uh, let's just have a look at these lamps shall we. Oh these are earlier ones. It's got the earlier lens on it. That one had popped off. Right, so there's one. Looking at that, that's a flashing circuit. I can't remember if my other one is a flashing or steady burn now. <laughs> Keep an eye on my battery because it's getting low. I put a video together for my Lego channel. Three takes, that's all it took. And in case you didn't know, when I do these videos, I don't edit anything in the middle. I just do one take with the camera rolling. But this one has actually taken a lot more takes so far. Oh. I have another one. Ooh, a darker lens on it. Thank you for all of this. Much appreciated. Put those lamps down there. Actually, have I got a battery in this one? Do I have a battery in this one? I do. Not very bright, but I do. Shall we see if they work? Oh! oh so 
much and has to get these lip tops off as well. I can grip the back of one. I suppose they were that tough to try and deter people from stealing the batteries, but it never worked. The number of lamps like this I used to see at Roadworks that just had this piece, the bit that I call the bucket. There was <laughs> everything else had obviously gone and, well, I suppose the workman had either lost it or uh, it had fallen off somewhere or someone had ripped it off to nick the battery. This one works. I swear this one's brighter than my other one. Ah, yeah. A very minor crack in the lens on this one. I remember him saying that. Right. Oh, this is the other one. Can't remember. Is this one cracking or something? Oh, yeah, it's got some minor damage on the lens as well. Smells like petrol. <laughs> That's what it smells like to me. <clears throat> it's just so clean for something that's uh, quite old. Right. Oh. Got a slower flash rate on this one. It's not going to be that bright because it's not a brand new battery, so... <clears throat> Put these back together. So again, thank you for these. It's a pity they didn't have a bolt in because I would have tried to bolt them to my uh, current top of that. Ooh, this one has. This one has. I got this one cheap on eBay with the... Um, Supplier sticker on green and was the supplier. I don't know, I don't think they still exist. Oop, on the way of the dodo. Unfortunately, I don't have a JSP key in here. Put all my keys in a tub in the outside closet with all my other lamps. But I oh, that's a long bolt. But that way on, so it would sit on that base, and the bolt would go into this little cubby hole there to prevent theft, because it is, you can't really get your fingers in there to start it. So you really need the key. Oopsie daisy, I hit the battery and cut the camera off. And the battery's about to go dead anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna end the video then. So yeah, that's how they're meant to work. And then that just sits on top of the cone and your barrier planks just slot straight into those slots. And you would use those on cones just like the one I've got in the kitchen. I'll quickly show you that before the battery goes. You can use a cone like this with them. See, it's got the slot in the bottom. So you can slot your barrier panel into that. Quite a nice system. I actually quite like that system. Mm. But I just need one more of those cones now to make a complete set. Pardon me. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video. And uh, I'll talk to you all again very soon. Bye-bye.